What's up guys, welcome back. My name is Jeff, I'm the owner of RDR Gear in Sauk City, Utah. We're once again back at the Farm Training Center. We got my buddy Chris Cook here from Odyssey Training. How we doing? We're gonna talk about some weapon lights and a brand of weapon lights that I personally am very, very fond of. But before we get into that, let me tell you a little bit about what I do and what we do at RDR Gear. I own RDR Gear in Sauk City, Utah. We are a soft goods manufacturer based out of, out of Sauk City, Utah. All of our products are made here in Salt City, Utah. So we specialize in plate carriers, chest rigs, placards, med kits. We have a full line of canine products as well as our bread and butter Kydex holsters. We'll be revamping our Kydex holster lineup for the first of the year, bring you guys an even better product with a little bit of modularity. That's gonna help you guys really kind of conform to your personal way that you wanna carry your holster. And when you take classes from like guys like this, you guys have a little bit of modularity in those products that you purchase from us. We also specialize in Safari Land holster mods, probably our most or most known for right now. We do holster mods for a wide variety of pistols that Safari doesn't offer an OEM solution for. Things like 5 inch 2011s, VP9s, Walther PDPs, uh, Q5 SF Match. A lot of our products that we do, a lot of these one off holster mods that I produce, I put on our Instagram or our Facebook page. You can find those there. You can also see all of our products at rdrgear.com. If you have questions, you can email me at info at rdrholster.com. You can also DM, it, DM me at your own risk. I do pretty good at DMs, but sometimes I do miss them. So emails are always the best. So we appreciate the support. And with all that housekeeping out of the way, let's talk about handhelds. So Cloud Defensive, a product, actually a company that I really, really appreciate because the way that the company is ran from top down. Um, the owner at Cloud Defensive is always out in front of the product line, showing, sharing, keeping the consumer informed, also listening to the consumer. Probably one of the most engaged dudes in the industry in regards to when they develop product. Um, it's no secret we're all waiting for the cloud. Or cloud held, pistol light, count pistol light, right? Count yeah, the days. so um, that's gonna be a hot one that we'll all will be on. But I have here two single output lights. Um, have you played either one of these? Uh, a little bit, yes. Okay. So we've got the high output, yep. and then you've got the everyday carry yep. output. EDC, so they have yeah. they have two different head designs. Um, so their everyday carry head uh, would be kind of a competitor if we're going to talk about you know them and them and Mod Lighter yep. in the space race for the best light, yep. right? Uh, so this is kind of your PLHV2 style head where you have a good throw, but you also have a good flood as well. And then the high output, high candela HC head. Um, man, this thing is bright. Yep. Seventy thousand candela. Yep. 70,000 uh, and you can get it in the 18350 uh, size profile. So super, super bright light. Um, and also one of the things I like the most about Cloud Defensive versus uh, Mod Lighter or other brands out there too, is their color temperature. Uh, keeping the color temperature on the warmer side where it's a little bit more that yellow, kind of orange sometimes uh, of color style versus that really, really white blue. Uh, for me, helps me see a little bit more detail farther out. Uh, if I'm looking through something like window tint or something like that, I find that uh, a yellower light works a lot better. Gun smoke, when you start getting that gun smoke out in the air, having a, a lower temperature, a warmer temperature light. Um, and in, for me, works a little bit better. So that's that's one of the things I love the most about Cloud Defensive, and you can see it both in, in yeah. both of these lights. So Chris went a little nerd on you guys just now on color temperature, right? So why don't you explain to folks? Sure, so color temperature. Right. Uh, it's, uh, so basically, if you, if you look at the features you're looking for, you got four things. You got runtime, color temperature, lumens and candela those are the four nerdery numbers you'd look at in any light uh, runtime bigger battery longer runtime that one's pretty basic uh, when you look at color temperature uh, it's measured in something called kelvin and it's like a 5700 kelvin or 5200 kelvin you'll see these kinds of numbers out there um, but the bluer the light is typically the poorer quality the light is that's in that's kind of opinion it's kind of fact um, the warmer the light is when you see something that's a little bit in that whiter yellow 
below, closer to orange spectrum, um, the higher quality the light is. That's a super basic oversimplification, but I like that they keep their lights on the warmer side. You guys will see some of the, what he's talking about in the in the color tones. Yeah. And when we start messing with some of the task lights, you'll notice some of the task lights have a white-ish, kind of cloudy, bluish tint to them because the spill is so wide, there's not really any directional mm -hmm. force of that light or any, the beam has no kind of a, there's a very little candela in those because they're LEDs mm -hmm. and they're just pushing a, you know, very short distance, yeah. but a small, lot of light. Small reflector, so the small color, lens. Yeah, the color changes um, in those lights. And again, and you can see it really heavy in knockoff brand lights, like, uh, you know, anything you get in like one of your, one of your subscription boxes, yeah. those kind of lights, oh, yeah. you'll see a lot. They're you know? very blue. Yeah. Very, and it's almost like they engineered them that way. Yeah. I look at them and I'm like, who yeah. in their right mind would make a light this blue other yeah. than to cheat people out of their money? It's like one so. of Crispy's fancy, like, you know, souped up race cars with the blue tint on the headlights. That's yeah. what it looks like, right? Yeah. So, um, but, you know, so but, either way, uh, you know, you can get uh, these in both the 18650 and the 18350 battery size. So the 18650, a little bit bigger, fits in the hand pretty well. It protrudes from the bottom of the hand. So if you needed to use it as an impact weapon, you certainly could for that everyday carry yep. kind of uh, self-defense aspect. The 18350 smaller battery means yep. the whole profile smaller and it's lighter less runtime. Uh, I think you're just at about 50 minutes of runtime on this, if I remember correctly. Yeah. This one's getting close to two hours, which is pretty nice. Um, but as you can see, doesn't, doesn't fit in the hand all the way and protrude as much as the other one. And you also, if you have big hands, you run the risk on smaller lights like this of occluding the beam yes, with exactly. your pinky. Yep. And then as you shine it, you can see how much of the light is absorbed yep. by my hand. Um, that's a case by case basis yeah. thing. If you got tiny little dainty fairy hands, uh, then you're going to be just fine. Yeah. But if you got big old mitts, uh, it could be a problem. You know, I think in the in the handheld race thing, it was kind of like when Model Light came out. Everybody wants a light that's going to shine 150 yards. I personally give very little interest about a high candela handgun light. Because at the end of the day, I can only shoot a certain distance. I cannot shoot the distance my light travels, right? So for me- I mean, I can. You well, know, yeah. some dudes you can, can, you know? I mean, you can. Like, with these things, like, uh, rough. Yeah. But, you know, in every day, when you add, add the practical application to a pistol handheld light, your max distance for yeah. what we're gonna do tonight on a square range totally. is 25 yards. Yeah. Anything past that, you're just, that's at, where that social media influence, it's in your face all the time, kind of yeah. pushes. Same it's, thing here, yeah. right? I carry this one quite often. This is These are both my lights. Um, I like this EDC light because it does more than a task light. I have a good fitment in my hand. Um, I like the theorem. I just mm -hmm. need to get off my butt and order some of the switchbacks. Yep. And I wish I brought, bought one tonight, but I did not. So um, does your mod light later uh, on the switchback? I have light? the I have the low profile equipment. I've carried okay. the switch. If you don't know what a switchback is, th basically this clip has a ring on it that you put your finger through and then you can flip the light out of the way and uh, it re basically retains the light on outside your finger. Uh, so check them out, Theorem switchbacks. Uh, I keep their low profile equipment. I carried with the switchback for a long, long time. It just ended up being a little too yeah. obtrusive and a little too bulky. I was carrying in business clothes. I used to have a finance job a long time ago and I needed everything as low of profile. I didn't want to question, hey, what's that in your pocket? You know, yeah. so having just a pocket clip on something was a little bit more innocuous. With that being said, you know, like, and I, I agree because I had the same problem. But if you're going to take, you know, like, getting Chris's handgun class coming up here in November and you're going to want, I mean, you're that guy who wants that high output light, having the switchback on the light allows you, because, like, even though yeah, I own can... this light, I own this light to let buddies borrow it and try it out, right? Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of LE guys have been looking at these because they are a great bargain because what you get in the box, the charger, the battery, everything you need out the gate, right? And if you own both, you can mix and match. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you can see for me, if I put this light exactly where I can get to it, you can see how my palm starts to occlude the head right here. So if I go any further back, I'm in trouble. Now, this sucker does get hot. Now it doesn't get hot to where it's painful, but you feel it, right? Yeah, that's and a complaint on any, if you're gonna use yeah. any of those very high output, um, you know, kind of self-defense handheld flashlights, if you're gonna use them, 
uh, for a task where you illuminate a, a room with them because the power's out or something, like you leave it on a table or you're really searching for stuff for minutes and minutes and minutes long, um, you leave it on constantly, you're gonna get a big temperature increase no matter what brand you're looking at. Yep. Cloud is a little bit hotter than some of the other ones, so if, if you've done the testing and stuff like that and seeing, you know, these are these get pretty cooking. Uh, it's not gonna burn you by any means, but uh, it is it can be uncomfortable. It's something yeah. to think about. Yep. I mean, these are not fan of heart and price, but I can 100% say what you what you pay for is what you get. Mm -hmm. These are very high quality lights from a very good company. It has a great customer service, a great product. You also get, which we didn't mention, is the uh, ND, emit, uh, ND protector here, I guess you'd call it. Mm -hmm. There's three little cups that go on the back here that help you keep from depressing the bezel for a white light ND. Yep. So you can kind of figure out which one fits you best and then come in the package. Mm -hmm. But this one is a great, because I do keep this in as much as I don't like to, you know, I use it here and there, but at the end of the day, I keep this when it's not being loaned to somebody, I keep it a little amp with all my med stuff because yeah. having a bigger, brighter light might help me with, you know, you know, flagging somebody down or whatever the case may be. But this as an EDC light, even though it's labeled as an EDC, it's not a task light, it has quite a bit of light and it definitely will get your attention if I zap you in the face with it. So, 100%. Um, very great light, good quality. Um, Actually, one question for you. Do you remember, uh, you talk about pricing. Uh, do you, these are just two, two something? I want to say two, just shy of three and you okay. for the full kit or just over three for the full kit. Okay. I can't remember exactly. Gotcha. Um, but well worth it. They come in the black and the tan. Yeah. So not um, cheap by any means. No. But they, you can, they're super solid, very, very rugged. Um, yeah, they'll, they'll last forever. So definitely worth the money. This thing is kind of like, I think like sunglasses, right? Yeah. You, you can buy six pairs of cheap sunglasses or you can buy one pair of good sunglasses. Mm -hmm. Once you invest in that one, I think, yeah. you know, you, you maintain it more. You know where it's at. Yeah. It's kind of like, you, you don't, know. You don't lose it because exactly. it's the thing you're not going to It's not disposable. Yet. Exactly. So, but yeah, so I great like product. Uh, I can't say enough about them. So if you guys are looking at that, check them out, um, clouddefensive.com. The Theorem is a separate thing. You can go look at that as yep. well. And then when you guys hit up Chris's class uh, in November, give these guys uh, the classes here at the farm? Yeah, so uh, I'm launching a low light handgun class here at the Farm Training Center in Salt Lake City, Utah, November 19th. Uh, so we're gonna be looking at both handheld and weapons mounted applications for uh, for all your lights that you use for, for everyday carry and self-defense. Uh, specifically designed the class for civilians. So it's not just about, hey, this is now a gunfight. How do we use a handgun and a handheld flashlight or yep. weapon mounted light? But how do we use our handheld EDC light to deter crime? dissuade somebody who's hey you got a yes. dollar you know how do we use those in scenarios like that so it's it's more than just uh a gun blasting, fight. blasting targets yeah. uh with white light yeah. we certainly do that but yeah. it integrates in both so yeah. definitely check it out on the website odyssey training llc.com o-d-y-s-s-e-y training llc.com you guys white light training or handheld or low light is definitely something you, i've done quite a few of them over the years uh but it evolves and the technology changes because the lights change, the tactics change. But at the end of the day, there is so many things you can do. In all my years of nightclub work, working the EP side of it, I never carried a weapon-mounted light. I've always carried a handheld light. But I promise you this, you can get a lot more de-escalation done and attention getting from others who may not be paying attention to you mm -hmm. with a white light. 100%. I promise you. Absolutely. Because if no matter what's happening, if someone's giving you grief, you're a young girl, college campus, whatever case, walk in your car, you zap someone in the face with this thing at six feet away, they're gonna have a migraine that comes on that literally, it gives you that little bit of time to get to a weapon, get away, get help, whatever. Mm -hmm. But this is a great tool, not replacing a handgun, but it's a great complimentary tool to a handgun. So definitely training is the key. Hit up Chris, check it out if you're local. If you're local, you guys, the farm is not far away, right? If you're not coming to local classes out here, honestly, you're lazy. Mm -hmm. it, there's a lot of great instructors out here. Josh, the owner of PPU Solutions, the owner of the farm here, they've been bringing top-notch instructors here now for what? What on two, two and a half? Go, over two years. Over two years? Yeah. There are dudes that I have trained with that have come here that I had to travel to another state, ship ammo, ship guns, do all that stuff. So it's in your own backyard, the investment of training is not inexpensive, but I promise you, two things will happen. One, you will really know what you think you know, and two, you will leave away, leave the training that you've taken, coming, leaving away a better shoe than when you came. So yeah. that's hands down, so. Tactical handheld lights, y'all. Cloudman makes probably the best light, I think, out today. 
Um, I really enjoy both these. The High Candela, you guys saw, is wicked bright. Uh, I prefer the EDC, even though it's a little bigger. Uh, this light output does more for me in what I need to do every day. Uh, I use it a lot to pick up poop with the dogs, and then it's still, again, it is a little big in the pocket, but for what I need, it's well worth it. And I like Cloud as a company. I really like what they do. I like the ownership of the company from the top down. I like the transparency. I like their communication. And I like supporting other company that does those things. So at the end of the day, these are not crazy expensive, but they are also not faint of heart in regard to price point. So again, budget accordingly. But if you're looking for a quality handheld light that is a more defensive handheld use light, this is where it's at, the cloud defensive, the MCH in the uh, standard EDC output and the high candela output. Um, again, uh, this one here is just a smidge small for my hand um, where I really like the output here. So at the end of the day, you can't complain either or. So they are super bright like that for crispy and that's the EDC one. So again, you can see both lights. But other than that, you guys, the cloud defensive, check them out, highly recommended. Um, you can't go wrong with supporting a great company like cloud. Thanks for watching. As always, post two to three videos every week on gear that we review, gear that we manufacture. Until next time, be well. Take care. She's a nine, but her hands are bigger than yours. Ooh, that's a good Ooh, one. Man. That's a good one. I'd keep her at a nine. I'd keep her at a nine. Because guess what? Hands can be beautiful in and of themselves. And size... I think is not as relevant as like if she's got some good hands. I got and the, but the problem is I got gigantic hands, so that means she's got some some catcher's mitts going on. I don't know. I keep her at a nine. I'll probably go nine as well until I see her. <laughs> until okay. you see her. Well, I'm gonna watch when when she's when she's eating. It's like that Seinfeld episode. You know, I'm gonna be watching man hands. It's all I'm gonna be focusing is these giant hands swallowing. Yeah, he can't, a glass he's not gonna. Or, he's, it's you know. yep. You're down to a seven or something with him. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough one.